All right, those two gentlemen join us this morning uh, to get some reactions concerning what? Plot to sabotage polls? We'll find out in just a moment. So Daniel Bola is a spokesperson at Tiku Okawa Campaign Organization, that's the PDP. And sitting right beside him is Adamu Garba, Deputy Director Media, ABC's Independent Campaign Council. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning. Thank you. Well, Mr. Garba, how do we explain this? Uh, fuel crisis, Naira redesign, your candidate, the presidential candidate, Tinubu says it is plot to sabotage him, is targeted at him and ensure that he doesn't breast the tape. How is that so? It is very possible, and you know, somebody at his level, um, Ashwa Jubala Metinibu, who understood the power game, understood the fact that there are possibilities of some saboteurs that will definitely scuttle his chances of winning simply because he is a clear front runner in this contest. And this is not unhistorical because even our president, the current president, Muhammadu Buhari, Throughout, during the run-up to 2019 election had similar experience where the entire country was held to jugular. Around the same foil issue, he had to come out and blame marketers and insist that there are supposed to be logistical arrangements that will make sure that the foil is distributed across the country. But this is the same situation we are facing. When we are targeting the election, where we are in a clear majority, the remnants of the PDP within the system are trying to also bring about their usual kidnapping model within the system. Because they try to help the system to jugular, to scuttle the chances of the APC, unknown to them that Nigeria is well aware of what is happening. And one thing again is that they are even trying to cash out from it, trying to bring the president and uh, our uh, candidate into collusion by quoting in the pages of their own newspapers that is actually, uh, the Ashua is actually attacking the president, which is not the case. The president himself faced the same problem. Yeah, Ashua is now facing the same issue. But the president is the minister. The Petroleum. president he is the chairs Minister the of Petroleum, but yeah. the Ministry of Petroleum Resources have the areas where government control and the area where private sector participates. In the area of logistics and distribution of pe uh, petroleum products in Nigeria, we have to pass through the private sector. And so many of these private sectors are merchants that have entered agreement of sharing formula with the PDP. So they are trying to sabotage the so effort you, of our government you have as on, they used to do. Do you have this on good authority? Are you privy to any of such agreements? My candidate said so. And I want to believe him 100%. Hmm. Yes, yeah. Mr. Bola, how do you plead? Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, evidence is not admissible in court. But, you know, it is intriguing, actually. The, yesterday, I, I, I started reflecting on what we have been seeing, like a pattern. But now the pieces are coming together. Because at first, it was that INEC should discard the idea of beavers. And INEC chairman stood his ground. Then we started reading on the pages of newspaper there is pressure from the ruling party that the INEC chairman be sacked. The civil society came together and fought against it. They, they, that uh, plan failed. Then secondly, we now started hearing that they have instituted a matter in court asking that the INEC chairman be sacked. Then again, it failed in no, the court. I, I think that matter had been on for a long time, though. No, that, it was that when... INEC chairman. No, it was instituted around the time the pressure came from the ruling party that he be removed, and the, the presidency says he's not going to be removed now. So after the second one failed, then suddenly we heard that the central bank governor is going to be sacked. The central bank, bank governor is A, B, and C. Yeah, because that was the DSA saying, uh, I think it was what, funding terrorism? And then they approach the courts, which is a legal process. Well, I have never seen the DSS physically doing anything to him, but I have seen a House of Rep member of APC cheering the committee. And every conversation I've seen in different platform, the House of Rep member. So they now went through that. And while that was going on, you remember, the House of Rep, as an institution, consistently maintained the position, even to a point where they were summoning him, that there be extension. And when that failed, then now he, he has to go. Yeah, but that, now, that, that's a usual legislative function. Yes, but what I'm saying... To the CBN and Bankers Committee. Right, so what I'm saying is that... The, which government is this? It's the government of APC. The president of the republic is the leader of APC. And I'm glad you reminded him. He's also the petroleum minister. Now, Asiwaju, let me tell you a pattern that is going on. Before the primaries, it was in Ogun State, in Abeokuta, where he gave his famous... I have a dream speech, a Miloko speech. And as soon as he gave that, a kind of pressure came into the system in APC. But even then, if you recall, the president said, no matter what the party comes up as a resolution, there must be voting. 
The president stood his ground in the party. That was why Asiwaju got the ticket. Now, that's one. So now he went back to Adi Abiy Kuta because the first one that he used in blackmailing the president worked. So now he went there and they spoke in the same manner, thinking that by setting up the people against the president, because even if you pick somebody on the street, everybody knows so, the papers reported do, does it, it was then, a war. Are you then suggesting that he doesn't have what credible information to say that this Naira we design and this fuel crisis is targeted at me to sabotage him? Look at the point. In fact, he said targeted at me. It, I take you back to that famous, I have a dream speech, Emil Kohn. Emil Kohn, Emil Kohn means it is my turn. So everything that revolves in the country is about him. Let me tell you, the fuel crisis or fuel queue, we've had that for many times in the but past eight years. Could you speak to that part where he says remnants of PDP are the ones who are actually doing this through the private sector? Do you believe them? Who is the minister of petrol? So what they are saying is the president is incompetent minister. I'm even happy they are the ones saying it. So what is happening is, you know, they came out with a manifesto. The entire manifesto is war against Buhari's government, but they say the uh, renewed hope. And we came here. I read that uh, manifesto three hours flying from France to Nigeria. In three hours, I dissected. When I finished, I said, this is a manifesto that is built to depart from the president because they adjunct the, the president and his government okay. as a failure. So, so now they are coming back again to say the president has failed. So, Mr. Gaba, does that suggest you're not on the same page, the, the, your candidate and the president? The you should expect the that uh, the former Ashua Juorio, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Bala, should try to catch out in this new strange home. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> so you should expect this opposition. In the first place, I want to correct that. The, the rect member, that he mentioned as an APC member is not. He's actually an ADP member. He's no longer good. Ajay Kazori is no longer an APC member. He didn't win his uh, APC ticket. So we can even say <laughs> that he's actually attacking us, you know, maybe to advance his interest. That's the case. And the second thing is that this is one of the most transparent government ever instituted in the history of, of, of this country. That's the government of President Muhammad Buhari. Why did I say so? Because he allowed the legal framework to take its course on every situation. You don't expect him to be like the way PDP used to do, to go and hold somebody to jugular, even though there is a legal impediment to us. The there, is, there is a law that established the operation of the private sector in the overall supply chain of the petroleum industry. Mm -hmm. You don't expect the president to go and say he's going to break this law and hold them accountable simply because they are doing something wrong. Yeah, but, but if they flout the law, the law should take its course. What is floating the law? The thing is, you have logistical challenges. They are trying to cash out of the logistics challenges to put pressure on Nigerians to go to the candidate that used to give them money. Because when Atiku was the president, they all <laughs> cash out big time. So now that President Buhari is in charge, they were lost, they lost out for almost seven and a half years. Now they That's see again crazy. in the renewed hope manifestos of Ashua Jubola Ahmed Tinibu, it's a perfect consolidation and continuity of the establishment of President Muhammad Buhari's structures. You don't think that what he said is he does not read the New Manifesto. I don't believe he read the New <laughs> Manifesto. I think he's confusing it with PDP manifestos, that five-page manifestos they drop. I think he's confusing them with it because they are the ones that are trying to do everything possible to scatter whatever President Muhammad Buhari has done. But the New Home manifestos, every single line of that manifesto from the macroeconomic policies to microeconomic policy to industrialization policy to housing policy, to education policy, to agricultural industrialization policy, to security policy, is a perfect consolidation and continuity of President Muhammad Buhari's um, uh, plan for the past... Uh, the second part of this, uh, and speak to this, if you will, where many think, in fact, it's been said in several quarters, that your presidential candidate or his team or his party, his associates, are actually the ones behind the persecution, quote-unquote, of the CBN governor as a result of this Naira redesign policy. Is that correct? How can that happen, for God's sake? It is a central bank government, an independent institution within the constitution of Nigeria. Central bank is a standing institution. And central bank came up with a policy, a policy that said they have to redesign the currency because of PDP's arrangement to stack so much money. They used to do that during their government. You know, you go to soccer where you see PDP's money, you go to farms, you see PDP bury money. They have done that. About 85% of the money. I'm coming now. 85% of the money. 
85% of the monies that are supposed to be in the bank are in private hands. The CBN say, I want to redesign this. And they started fighting him. That is the situation. The same PDP, you know, that has been attacking us through the foil, foil issue are the same group of people that are also painting that there is a fight between our candidate and um, um, central bank governor. <laughs> Meanwhile, we on our own part, we are 100% behind this currency redesign. What we are saying is that let the whole country come together to support the distribution of this Nera to reach the common man. If the same PDP and also the remnant of the opposition, some of the saboteurs within the system, can allow INEC to distribute its PVC cards across the whole country to each and every street from 12th of December till now, why won't they allow Nera to go you to know why? Too? Let me Let me tell you why I am just smiling and happy. Because it is in the same breath and in the same mouth that he condemned the central bank, that he now said it is an independent institution that is redesigning the Naira because PDP has stashed money somewhere. So then if that is what you're saying... No, he said the party. The party is... They support the policy. So, so if the party support the policy, who is the candidate of the party? And what did he say yesterday? He even... He was so de derogatory towards the policy. We should be the one to say this Naira just changed color. He said you can even add ink. To no, it. no. No, let me finish. I did not interrupt. Mm. So you can see the conflict and contradiction. The government is that of APC. I hope you know that the central bank governor almost ran for presidency in that party. 18 political parties registered to participate in this election. Only one political party is kicking against it. If there is foil hype, the whole political party will be affected. If there is currency redesign and it's an attack, the whole political party. So that means something is fishy. There is something they are not telling us about what they plan to do. Let me ask you, in the history of Nigeria, which candidate and political party used the bullion van on election day in the morning in Nigeria? So yeah, which political party that when the presumption of innocency, of the presumption of regularity can be said to have stashed money somewhere. Okay, but before Mr. Gaba comes in, yeah. I mean, if the president says, look, he supports his policy, it is a policy of his government, mm -hmm. should it matter what any other candidate says? So that's what's happening. So good point. So they are trying to blackmail the president into believing that he is working against their candidate so he will permit them to influence the instrument of the state's in their favor. Watch the pattern. You remember it was not long ago, they, they addressed a press conference where they were trying to intimidate agency of government, giving them 72 ultimatum. Meanwhile, that candidate has not answered the question that has lingered and is lingering in the minds of Nigerians, that in 2015, Alpha Beta transferred $4 million to a firm and an account in London belonging to somebody linked to a drug cartel no, in Barracuda in Colombia. That is what's been circulated, not by any government agency. To so say that that is a product of proper investigation so, by any government agency. So if there is anybody that the Nigerian people are deserving of the answer and the responses, it should be them. The point I'm saying, sir, before you go to him, and very important, that the government is the government of APC. The policies of this government are policies of APC. They have a manifesto. They have a constitution that guides the government. Buhari told the world that I will leave a legacy of free and fair election. They wanted him to allow them to read the election. Now that he stood his ground, they went back to the same place where principle A applied when he blackmailed the president. Is that by inference? That's, what, that's the way it comes across to you. Has anybody categorically said that? Everybody, look at the newspapers. All the newspapers, I had your newspaper analysis today. Everywhere, Tinibu, Tinibu, this is okay. one, this is one. But uh, isn't that... World crisis, Nara, the design that third, to sabotage So that's not third party too? No, but who are representative of the voices of the Nigerian uh, that, people? That is, that, is, that is why I said maybe because there is a kind of twist and a plot by PDP <laughs> to usually hold everybody to jugular because they are very good in this kind of thing, to kidnap the system in their favor. <laughs> that's what they are doing. My candidate, the incoming president of Nigeria, by the grace of God, Asiwa Jubala Ahmed Tinibu, clearly stated that if you like, keep holding the Naira. He's talking about the distribution, not the printing. And, and I also said again, if you like, put ink on it. 
you know about the conspiracy that is being peddled by the opposition that the Naira can be reprinted. It's so so by the opposition. It's not by the opposition. It was Nigeria. It's not by the opposition. It's by the opposition. They are saying that you can actually frame this Naira. You can you can um, counterfeit it. In fact, some of them are even putting the pictures and rubbing on their hands. The person that is championing this is Gudaje Kazauri. He's an opposition candidate. Who tell you that he might not be working for the PDP is because the his party has no chance? So that is that is that is the situation. Okay. So that Naira redesign, Tinubu did not condemn the policy of President Muhammad Buhari. He did yes. Tinubu is attacking the Saba tours within the chain of the distribution of the Naira. That's it's what he's government. doing. Okay. To me, by doing so, he cares so much for the common man because the common man <laughs> is feeling the same pain. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Akai, I don't know if you remember the day that Buki said, well, she tried something with the currency. So I hope you're not a member of the opposition. <laughs> if they don't interpret it that way, go ahead, guys. Oh, thanks, Chamberlain. Uh, with the way Mr. Boala is laughing, you think maybe Mr. Garba might want to pick up comedy because it seems to be cracking up Mr. Boala a lot this morning. But let's take the words of your presidential candidates in proper context. Let's even read it out to Nigerians. And this is what he says. He says, even if they changed the ink on Naira notes, whatever their plans, it will come to naught. Even if they change the ink on the Naira notes. And we know that it is a responsibility of a CBN uh, to do that, just as he has done, the redesigning. And a lot of people were saying it was just a change of color. In fact, the CBN governor had said that this was approved by President Muhammadu Buhari. Uh, so maybe you are interpreting another way perhaps because you're a party member, but this is Claire, and he talked about the petrol situation as well. So in the light of that, saying that the CBN governor is one responsible for that, and it was approved by the president. Uh, really, what's the point in really trying to cast a different light on it, other than what a lot of people believed that they heard? That's for you, Mr. Garba. I think that is exactly why we are here to clarify this particular issue. The president, the CBN governor, and Asiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinibu are on the same page. They are the victim of the same machinations of the opposition within the system. That is the case. Asiwa Ju is not against the Naira policy, like the Naira redesign policy. No, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who approved it, no, the central bank, who is responsible, the central bank governor, who is responsible for the policy. So the issue we are having is that there is a Naira redesign that is supposed to go in to deny vote buying. Vote buying, you know, is a mercantile enterprise of the PDP. That is even the reason why on coming of the APC, this thing has been dismantled completely. So they see this as an opportunity for them to cash out. So they went in against the CBN governor, attacking every single first set of the Naira that were printed. Some of them went to the point whereby they would just pick the Naira and put some chemicals on it to show that it is not well done. And some even go ahead to even design it, you know, using Photoshop to show that you can actually be able to counterfeit it, discrediting the new Naira, casting doubt on the minds of Nigeria about the stability of this Naira. So that is why our presidential candidate is sounding the alarm, echoing the pain of the ordinary people. They need this Naira. This Naira design has been done 90 days ago. The monies are supposed to be in every nook and cranny of Nigeria, but because of the antics of the opposition to that particular policy, Nigerians are worried and concerned about the fact that if this Naira design has actually been done. Remember, even the PDP candidates, some of them are saying that the Naira is not altogether available and that it should be extended. So this is the issue that is taking place within the system. Asiwaju is only acquiring the pain of Nigerians. He knows that on the foil queue, Quick that one. the PDP has created within right, the quick system. Right, quick one, a quick one, so I can get the point you're problem. making. Uh, pardon me, quick one. Yes. So you said that the PDP has asked, who in the PDP or who are the people in the PDP that have called for an extension of this policy? <laughs> no, the thing is, right, you see, the establishment of Nigeria, as I said, this is a capitalist state. So whether we like it or not, there is a private sector, great private sector participation also 
in addition to the public sector policy implementation and interest. So when you marry this thing together, you will see that there are some remnants of the PDP in the private sector that are responsible for this distribution. Don't forget, it is the candidate of the PZ, PDP. I, 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 the I'm trying to understand enterprise. that particular <laughs> point you are made. To help in servicing the common man. Right. But I, I, now this I'm because trying to understand the hands, point. Pardon me. Let, let me just bring the question in. So you said that the PDP or members of the PDP have called for an extension of this, you know, swap, the Naira redesign and all of that. So I just want to know, uh, do you have an authority? Who are those members of the PDP? So at least Mr. Bola can respond or otherwise. Is that question at me? Is that, is that question at me or at That's Mr. Bola? That's Mr. Garba, then I'll take it to Mr. Bola. But I wanted to get, who are those PDP members you talk about? The PDP members are the members that have stacked their funds in their houses because Who? they are planning to do vote buying. Identity. We have a credible authority that the PDP candidate is planning to spend so much money per polling unit so that he can buy votes. <laughs> how and much, all these monies are already stacked. You, how much did you hear so about, Mr. Garba? They want to use that. How much? How much per polling unit did you hear? Our is saying that, no, you can't buy Nigerian voters. To I'm me. trying to come yes. through. How much did you okay. hear per polling unit? How much? Okay. Yes, a lot of money. I cannot be able to mention here to you because I don't want them to know that we knew their strategies. Come on, Mr. Galba. You already they told us. So you already told us that they plan to spend money. To I votes. mean, if you and have it have on good authority, you can as well tell us how much. Nigerians deserve the right to express their right without being in, without 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 nobody, nobody deserves to buy the votes of Nigerians. All right. No one. Okay, so. All right. Let's bring Mr. Boala in quickly. I, I, I know this has been a lot of back and forth, but I, I know it. it, it to understand maybe what's at play here so that at least looking forward to the elections Nigerians know what to expect and of course they're not disenfranchised because I imagine the effect this will have on Nigerians uh, the allegation is rife that your party is looking to cash in on this in fact almost immediately there was a statement uh, put out uh, by your party but in the light of the statement made by the APC's candidate uh, it will look like you are even supporting the president in the Naira redesign in even when you said that he wanted to leave an electoral system uh, that is better than what we've seen in the past. So would you commend President Buhari on those points at least? You know, <laughs> you know, the, 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 today they want to sell the president over. They are classifying in this interview that the president is a member of PDP. You have asked him question. Chamberlain has asked him, who was the person who approved the policy is the president. He said PDP are the ones stashing money. So PDP should be the one to cry that this Naira design will mean that their monies will no longer be relevant. In the same breath, you say A, you say B, and you're confusing yourself. Heck, I'm even surprised that this morning, it is the opposition that is clapping hand for the president's policy of delivering a fee, free and fair process, confidence in the process. It is so shocking. The world is surprised today. That it is the opposition saying, good. And they are now saying that the policy of their party, led by their candidate, is anti-people. So let's go to the people. If it is about the people, in the past eight years, there have been series of fuel scarcity. When was the last time Asiwaju came out and spoke for the people? When the issue of Naira redesign was introduced and announced three months ago, where was Asiwaju? And if you say that he is concerned, he's expressing the minds of the people, does it mean that Asuaju has been denied access to Villa? They are good in organizing conferences. You have asked a series of questions here. I have not been able to say anybody. We have credible evidence. Somebody told us we had it. You ask him who and does not have. But let me tell you what is happening. It is called pantophobia. Increased anxiety that is triggered by the fear of failure. It is staring at them right in the face. They are picking anything they can see. In the kitchen sink is a weapon they throw. But this, what is happening is in local colloquialism in Hausa, when somebody says, do kashihu, meaning that it has come to the point. They are hailed by the balls. Yesterday, American embassy, and true to their promise, announced visa restrictions on individuals that will make any attempt to compromise the election. The international election observers are already in the country. The world is watching at people who wanted to use money to compromise the election. They want to weaponize poverty with money. 
and the government came with a policy that should be clapped, 18 political parties. It is only one political party responsible for the chaos and the problems we have found ourselves in the last eight years. They are the ones that are crying foul against the very president they claim is their leader. But today, I think that the president should have a reason to sip his coffee or tea or cappuccino or anything that he's gradually been trying to vindicate himself from the kind of problems we have come into. Who in the world and in this country is not excited that election, electoral reform is now increasing confidence in the voters? Who will not appreciate the fact that Nigerian people should be able to have their voices and not to be compromised by vote buying? That today, members of the same party, of the same government, and we told you, we told you, Kayude, that a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. We told you, and I said it here, that their manifesto is anti-Buhari. We told you here, they were the ones behind the removal of INEC through the court, through the government, and, and the, the persecution of CBN government. We told you. Now these things are coming to fall. It's not about Nigeria. It is Emile Khan. In When the first I Have a Dream Emile Khan speech came, what did he say? The target was still the president. Yesterday's on the target was still the president. The first time he said, Oshekini, Olule. Oshekeji, Olule. Osheketa, Olule. Ore, Shekorani Television. This was what he said. And then he went back to the same spot. Well, Mr. Buala, uh, it, it, it's an interesting way but to look at, uh, you know, uh, the, the, world is the positioning of the candidate of the All Progressive Congress, uh, which is what I want to review yet again for uh, his spokesperson here, Mr. Garba. It's interesting, Mr. Garba, that you say that he was echoing the pains of Nigerians, you know, and Nigerians would have been um, keen on... Uh, that comment, if it was indeed uh, to represent them. That's why I had to go back again to look at the statement of your candidate. But there's no way uh, that it relates to the pains of Nigerians. He related it to his candidacy. He says, let them increase the price of fuel. Let them continue to hoard fuel. Only them know where they have hoarded fuel. They hoarded money. They hoarded Naira. We will go and vote. So it's in relation to his pains, his worry about the elections as it affects him. I'd like you to clarify yet again, perhaps there's something we're missing, how this affects Nigerians. I think there's a mistake here. We need to begin to see Tinibu as an institution, not as individual. He is the flag bearer of the largest political party in Africa. He's the flag bearer of the larger political party that emerged through a very democratic process. Every member of this party and every supporter of this government is behind Tinibu. So when Tinibu said, me, it is all of us, the institution surrounding Tinibu. And at the end of the day, he mentioned, we are going to vote. This is showing but Mr. Garba, Mr. Garba, pardon me, let me just come in here. But, but it would seem as, so uh, as if uh, your candidate is at dissonance with Mr. President. Either it's the, his comment on the beavers during his uh, appearance at Chatham House, or even his reference to fuel scarcity. Mr. President is the Minister of Petroleum. Mr. President signed the Electoral Act, and the right, NIDA redesign he approved. So it would seem as if your candidate is at dissonance with Mr. President's, hence the comment by no, um, I, you know, elder statesman uh, Tanko Yakase. What are your thoughts on this? No, 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 no. You see, I don't know why we used to see government as a one party, one, one person kind of arrangement. Even in your family, even in the husband and wife setting, if you are a truly good husband, you have to listen to your wife. This is a government, a bureaucracy, an established institution that have a lot of chains of interconnectedness that have to come together around before decision can be taken. The fact that individual, President Buhari is an individual, doesn't disconnect the fact that there is a presidency, there is executive council, there is legislation, and there is a private sector that is driving the entire thing called the government. So we shouldn't be able to carry Tinibu and carry uh, Buhari and put them in a wrestle match. It doesn't make sense. But the fact that PDP has come in with their begging bowl, trying to beg the general, President Muhammad Buhari, that has dismantled them, consistently worked against them since 2002, <laughs> and succeeded in dismantling and sending them to permanent retirement. Now they turn back to begging bowlers. 
Carry the ball. I'm begging to call the president. All right, we gentlemen, we need to we need to go. Seriously. Let's get your closing thoughts on this one. So, yes. as you inch towards this uh, election day, February 25, um, in addition to your thoughts, do you think that the tides might have swung in favor of the APC? No, the, the, it is obvious that PDP is in the pole position to win. The facts are there. You can see even it, directors in their campaign. That's how people are living. You know, directors in their campaign are living. They are, it's like a house that is on fire. You had him now. He said in the in the in in case of Tinubu, he calls him an institution, but Buhari, he calls him an individual. He extricated Buhari from the system, that the system can compromise. But in Tinubu's own, when he say Emilio Konda, he's speaking on their behalf. Look at the what is happening. When he said people who vote us, you would have asked yourself, who? The Nigerians that have gone through hell in the past eight years? Now, look at their campaign. Shattered and completely obliterated. No ideas, incoherent coordination, problems every now and then. And then now, because of the effect of pantophobia, right. anything they can hold on to. The president, let right, me tell you the last one before we go down. to him. Yeah. The next stage, because this is one stage we don't grab them. The next stage is they are going to compromise beavers. They imported people from abroad. They are well, trying to I see how they I can compromise. Beavers is here to stay. Yes, the, no Beavers is there. So they are now trying to compromise. But in the coming right. days, you will see more. Mr. God, don't catch thoughts. them. You, can't, you can never be able to compromise Beavers. You can never be able to compromise the credibility of the election. You can, and you should forget, you shouldn't forget that it is the same APC that signed the Electoral Act into power because you control the majority of the government. And we gave the Electoral Act, okay. permitting Viva. So let and me you tell you this. Go to when you look at the election, the election is clearly in the win for the APC. <laughs> we have 22 governors of the APC. We have five governors of the PDFC. If you know about the PDFC that are president, right. we have five we governors of go. the PDFC. We have so many. In fact, we even the governor of Adamawa said, my, my state, we, he's, a, he's a G5 candidate. He's working against his We, we thank both of you for coming on. Adam Mugaba, Deputy Director of Media for APC's uh, Independent Presidential Campaign Council, and, and Daniel design. Obola, spokesperson at Siku Okawa Campaign Council. So for, that's for the PDP. So thank you both for coming on today. Thank you for having us. Let's